So what you're looking at here is our Tracer Plus desktop software. So that's the tool we use to create the mobile applications that you can deploy to your Android and iOS devices and also Windows Mobile and CE. So one thing I can show you here, uh, Kristen talked about it, our online solution center of applications that are available to you uh, to actually change or use as is. Uh, or as you see fit. So if we look at, let's say, asset tracking, you'll see that we have a bunch of different applications here, gives you a brief summary of what they are. And let's say I were to select tool and equipment tracking, uh, you'll see what that actual application may look like on the device once it's deployed to it, plus it gives you a brief description. Um, so you can actually use these applications as is, like I said, uh, if we follow through, we can actually import this into the desktop tool and end up pushing that over to the device. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to create an application from scratch uh, just to show you how quick and easy you can set up something to uh, start collecting data on your mobile. So I'm going to create a new project. And I'll just go over some of the project settings here. We have a project name. Um, so maybe we'll just do a quick asset scan. So we'll call it asset scan demo. And then we can choose the platform that we want to deploy to, whether it be Android, iOS, or Windows Mobile. Um, I actually happen to have a Windows device connected to my machine, so I'll just select Windows Mobile. Choose your operating mode. Uh, we have some admin settings here where you can actually require logins to Tracer Plus, uh, so you can actually validate who has access to the software as well as who would actually have access to the different sessions that may be on your device. Um, so one thing to note with Tracer Plus Desktop or a Tracer Plus project, you can run up to 32 different sessions or basically forms with data tables behind them. So with one a single project, you can run up to 32 different sessions. So you could do your asset tracking, you could do inventory, you could do inspections all with a single device, and then using logins, you can control which users have access to which of those sessions. Connect, which we'll dive into a little bit later when we uh, demonstrate the syncing of data, this is where you actually set up uh, a host of where you're actually syncing data to. And if we jump to our session, uh, so this, these are our session settings, these are our field settings here, so this is where we define the fields of information that we want to collect and then the attributes for each of the fields. We have a form designer uh, where you can actually build what your form is going to look like once it's deployed to the device. Some data capture settings, uh, whether or not you want to enable disable barcode scanning or RFID scanning. Um, we also support printing. Um, so you can actually print from the mobile devices via Bluetooth or a Wi-Fi connection. Or if your printer has a ethernet connection as well to the network, uh, you can send commands to those printers to print receipts, labels, uh, and such. In similar vein to the printing, we also have messaging. So you can actually send out emails from Tracer Plus or even text message alerts uh, based on certain criteria. So let's jump back to the field settings. And let's go ahead and define some fields here. So maybe we want a date that we're doing the asset scan. Maybe we want a location that we're at. The asset number. Maybe a description. And maybe we want a condition. We can remove any remaining fields we don't need. Uh, so for the date field, we'll go ahead and select a data type of date time. And once I pull in the open up the format dialog, we can actually customize how this date looks. So we can do just a date, just a time, both. And we offer different formats here based on uh, what region you're actually in. So I'm just going to choose our standard date format here. Location, we can set this to be a drop-down. So then we can actually define some of these drop-down values. 
So you can populate them here, import them from a text file, or using our Connect software, actually sync these values from a database table or an Excel workbook. All right, so we'll just say room 101, room 117, 203. So we'll just add a couple rooms there. Asset number, we'll be scanning that, so I'll just leave that as a text field. Description, um, so one thing we can do here, we can do another drop down, or one thing I can actually add here is a second session that would actually reference based on the asset number to pull in the, the description, and we call these a lookup. So I'm gonna actually add a second session here, but first let me name my first one here, we'll call it asset scan. I'll add a second session, we can call it asset list. And this could just be our asset list. So we have asset number, and then maybe description. Typically, you would obviously have more fields than this in the asset list, but I'm just gonna keep it simple just to show you the lookup feature. So now if I go to description, we go to our lookup options, I can enable this lookup. Then I can say I want to look into the asset list to find the lookup relationship. So I can say based on the asset number scanned in the local field, compare that to the asset number in the remote field to pull in the source field of description. So we're saying once we scan into the asset number, which is this trigger field here, we're going to look into asset list based on this asset number to return the description. And lastly, condition, this will be a drop down. So this is where we could say good, fair, and then maybe poor. Now that we've defined our fields, we need to control how we want the application to flow. So part of that can be defined in the after scan setting. So for example, if we go to location and we go to after scan, we see a go to field. So once we select the location, we're telling it to go to the asset number field. Another thing we wanna do here is turn off the clear on submit option. So what this means is if you're in a particular location and you submit an asset, you want that at that location uh, value to retain so you don't have to keep selecting it. Uh, to sort of speed up the data collection process. So that's why we turn off that clear on submit. Asset number, uh, since we're looking up the description, we don't need to go to that field, so we can tell it to go right to condition. Then our condition field, maybe we want to auto submit that record. So once we select our condition, we can have that auto submitted locally to the device and we can return it to the asset number field since we are retaining the location value. We do also offer validation settings to prevent uh, you know, duplicate scans. We can match data from different fields. We can validate based on barcode type scans. We can require fields using min max lengths as well as values if we don't want things to creep into a negative value, we can validate that nothing goes below zero. Um, and when you do enable validation, you'll see that you can choose whether or not to play the sound or display the error message. You could still save the record on an error. And you can also custom define a validation message that the user would see uh, if they happen to fail validation, as well as specify a custom sound file to play once that validation fails. So right now it's saying that I'm requiring the location field to be entered. So we just set it to a min length of one and we can say location is required. And lastly, if we jump to the advanced, we wanna set what field to actually start on. So since data is gonna be auto-populated from the device, we don't wanna start on that. We wanna start on the location field. A key field should typically be what you're, look, if you're using lookups, you're gonna to wanna to set this key field to be 
what you're looking up on, so our asset number. And then we also have some record update options here of how you want to actually save this data locally to the device, whether you want to append it, or if you want to update an existing row based on uh, a specified field. So we'll leave that as is. And we'll jump to our form designer and we can start by creating our form. So I'll click the create default. So that's gonna build a generic looking form. Uh, so now let's go ahead and uh, clean this up a little bit. So we can actually hide this tab by dragging it off the form outline here. You'll see in red, that's the outline of your form. So anything outside this won't display. So we'll hide our tab and then we'll hide the tab border. Then we can align some of our fields using the alignment controls that we offer up top. And we can select multiple controls by holding down the shift key and clicking them. And then we can sort of move this around. We can change font sizes. We could make things bold. Another thing I can do is make everything the same width. So if I highlight multiple controls based on the first control you selected, using our alignment tool, we'll size all of these selected controls to that width. So maybe we want a bold asset number and location. And maybe even condition. We can change the form coloring. So maybe we want a different form background. Uh, so we could do a dark gray. And then we can change the label controls as well to that same dark gray with white text. And maybe change some of our button colors here. To a blue with white text. And maybe we'll make those bold. So that's just a quick edit to the form, uh, just to make it look a little bit better. So I'm gonna go ahead and now deploy this to my connected device. And I'll slide my device over. We're using a, a free utility called My Mobiler that allows you to view your device's screen on the PC. If you're using an Android device, we recommend using the uh, Chrome add-in. So you'd have to use the Chrome browser, and there's an add-in called Visor, V-Y-S-O-R. So that's just an add-in to the Chrome browser that allows you to view your Android devices on your PC screen. So let me go ahead and go into our session here. If we look at Asset Scan. We'll see that it's going to look like what we designed here, uh, aside from these refresh buttons. So anything that is refreshable, uh, you know, a date, time, a variable field, uh, a lookup will by default show a refresh button. So what we can do is actually hide that by clicking the hide refresh option. So we'll do that for date and description. And we will just deploy those changes. And if we look at our device, we should now no longer see the refresh button. So let me go ahead and clear out my de device's data here. And we'll check the asset list as well. So now we come to our form. Here's our drop downs. Those are the rooms that I entered by scan an asset. So we'll notice that description is not populating yet because we didn't populate our asset list. So this asset list can be populated um, via connect, 
whether it comes from a database or an Excel workbook or a text file. Or in this case, I'm just going to enter some data real quick on the device itself, since it's just two fields. I'll do 1001, we'll say workstation PC. Submit that to 1002, server PC, and we'll do 1003, monitor. Now, if we jump back into asset scan, we'll select our location. If I scan one of these assets, you'll see now our descriptions looked up, workstation PC and that our cursor jumped down to the condition field, we can say good. Once I select this, since we set up the auto submit, it should submit that record and we should see this records up here move to one. There it is, it retained our location field, so we can now scan the next asset, server PC, good. And then we'll scan our last one, we'll say this is fair. So now we just scan three assets. Here's our three records. We can actually view these records on the device by going to the view data and then asset scan. So there's our three records. If we wanted to, we could actually edit these records if you made any discrepancies. Uh, so we can select them, hit edit, or you can even delete them if you want, uh, if you scan them in error. So now the object is to get this data off of the device into a database of some sort. So we're gonna do that utilizing our connect tool. So this is our connect software. So this enables the transfer of data to and from the device uh, using ODBC databases such as Microsoft Access, SQL Server, MySQL, Oracle, or pretty much anything that's ODBC compliant. You can also sync to and from Excel workbooks and worksheets, as well as delimited text files. Uh, we also actually offer a Salesforce uh, connection as well. So if you're using Salesforce, you can get data in and out of Salesforce using a mobile device and the Connect software. So I'm gonna start by creating a new project and then we'll create a new profile. So Connect offers two different types of profiles, uh, those being a sync profile or a live profile. Uh, so a sync profile is gonna allow you to basically sync via batch Wi-Fi, Cradle, Ethernet, uh, WAN or cellular, basically batch sync that data at the time of your choosing using a sync button on the form. So we can choose when to actually sync that data and then it'll sync all those rows over. The live profile is a real-time connection uh, to your database. I say database because that's really recommended. Um, you shouldn't be using Excel or text files for live, mo uh, for live profiles as it's very uh, process intensive. And, uh, Text and Excel don't handle that very well. So if you're doing a live profile, that's a nice real-time connection to your database, especially if you're using multiple devices that need to see other devices' updates, um, such as maybe a ticketing event, um, or if you're out in the field doing servicing, uh, it, it's useful to get that information back to the database as soon as possible. So that's where you would use that live profile. So in this case, I'm gonna use a sync profile and I'm just gonna associate my asset demo project to this profile as that makes it a lot easier to configure our field mapping. So we can name our profile. So let's say this one is sync from device. And then we can actually name our process. We'll call it sync asset scan. Next thing we can do is choose the source of where this data is coming from. In this case, it'll be Tracer Plus because it's coming from our device. And we're gonna sync it to an ODBC database. Uh, I'm gonna sync it to our sample access database that we include with Connect. So I'll sync it to our 10 field sample. So notice since we 
hide that desktop project to our profile, we're only seeing the two sessions in our project. If we didn't do this, we would see a listing of 32 generic sessions, so it would make it more difficult to configure these field mappings. So I'm going to sync from our asset scan session. I'm syncing to our 10 field sample table. And then we can just line up our mappings. These are generic fields, but if you actually had a database with actual field names, you would see those here in place of fields one through five. So in this case, I'm saying I'm going to sync the date to field one, location to field two, asset to field three, and so on. Then I can choose how I want to post this data to the database. Do I want to append it? Or do I want to override it? Or update existing based on some value? In this case, I'm just going to do append. And I can also choose to remove the data on a successful sync. So once we sync this, these asset scans off of the device and it's successful, we can actually remove them from the device. So we don't end up with duplicate data in this case. Let me go ahead and save this. And if we jump to our data viewer, so this is a view of that actual access table. Currently, we don't have any data in it. This is our synchronized screen that'll show sync progress as it's taking place. So now the next thing we need to set up is how do we actually get this data from the device to connect? So we're going to do that by setting up a sync, fun sync function on the device. What I can do is add a button to my form here. We'll call it sync. We can change its color to something different. Let's do a green with white. And the button action we're looking for here is do sync. So there it is, do sync. Once we select it, now it's looking for a host ID and a profile ID. So that's basically going to tell it where to sync to and what to actually sync. So now, where do we get these? Um, so we get the host ID from the connect settings in desktop. So here's our project tab. Here's our connect settings. So what we want to do here is add a host. So I can add my IP address here. And there's also some other settings here. If you did want to use a live profile, you would define your live sessions here. You can also set up sync timers to run every so many minutes or sync conditions, um, such as date time related syncs. But the only thing we're going to set up here is our host. And you'll notice the host ID is one. Let's jump back to the form designer and set our host ID here to one. Now, if we look at the Connect software and we go back to configure, we're going to notice that this profile has an ID up here called profile ID one. So if we happen to use multiple profiles, um, those would be assigned a unique profile ID. Um, so each profile can contain a listing of sync processes that you want to run within that profile. So in this case, it's profile ID 1. So let's go back here, go to our sync button, and define that profile ID. So now what this is saying is once I press this button, it's going to look for this host ID, which is my PC, on port 4403. So it's going to verify that connect is running. So once that connection is established, it's going to say, I want to sync profile one. So that means it's going to run any of these processes that we defined within profile one. So you can actually set up different sync processes into different profiles to control what gets synced when. So if you're looking to sync asset data to the device, you may have a separate profile for that that you sync maybe at the beginning of the day to get the latest asset list information. And then at the end of the day, you wouldn't want to resync that again. You would just sync the asset scans that you did. You would have that separate button tied to that separate profile. 
All right, so now that I have this defined, let me go ahead and deploy these changes to my device. And if we open our asset scan, here's our sync button. So we have three records. Let's open up Connect just so we can see the status. So if I click this sync button, uh, let me just connect properly through Windows Mobile Device Center here. So that's going to make our connection. It's going to sync our data. And then you'll notice that the record count on the device went to zero because we removed them on the successful sync. And if we refresh our access table here, we'll see that our asset scans are now in our database. So you'll see how easy and pretty quickly I set up this simple asset application to scan asset data and send this data back to an asset database. So I just want to touch on one other feature here um, that's, that's very useful. Uh, it's called form logic. So based on certain form events, we can perform certain actions. So let's say I can add an event here. We can say after scan of condition. So after scan of our control condition, which is control 13. So each control on our form has a unique control ID. So maybe we could say if 13 equals poor, Maybe we can set the back color of this condition label 12. We can set this to red. Else, maybe we'll just set it to, we'll just set it to white. So let me just go ahead and disable that auto submit. So you can see this actually take place. So I'll deploy this change. So I go to scan an asset. I select condition poor. You'll see because of that logic rule I set, we changed our condition label to have a red background. I select something else, it changes to white. So this was using form logic in a very simple scenario, but you can get pretty extensive in what you can actually do with those form logic controls, um, as there's a lot of events that you can trigger on and a lot of actions you can perform based on those events. Um, so that's pretty much what I wanted to demonstrate today with the Tracer Plus software. So I hope it shows you how quick you can get up and running with Tracer Plus and creating an application and then being able to sync it to a database. Great. Thanks, Joe. You're welcome. So we have a few minutes left, so we'll take some questions. Um, let's see here. First question, how is Tracer Plus licensed? So Tracer Plus Desktop is, the, again, the software that you use to create the application, and it's free. This is the software that Joe demonstrated how to um, create the application. In order to operate the application that you created, you need to install what we call a Tracer Plus mobile client license directly to the device. So each device that you deploy would require a Tracer Plus mobile client license along with a Tracer Plus Connect license, and these are both sold per device. They are a one-time fee and have yearly support contracts. Okay, another question. What type of pre-sales support, or what do you, what do you get with pre-sales support? Um, once you've spoken to your account manager and we've gathered all the useful information about your project, such as what device you're trialing or the database type you're using, um, we can set up your account with some pre-sales support. In our, um, we have an online support portal with which you end up in a queue and depending on the question, 
certain engineers will answer your questions and they'll typically email you back some helpful resources or provide you with step-by-step -step instructions. And don't forget our open office hours are also available to you. Those are twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, um, Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern and Thursdays 10 a.m. Eastern. Here. When will iOS be available? Um, iOS is available right now and um, you can get a lot more information from your account managers. And again, if you don't know who your account manager is, uh, just contact sales at tracerplus.com and one will be assigned to you. And another question is, what are the limitations to the trial version? So. The main limitation is the number of records that you can export. Um, that would be, let's say you scan 20 assets, only five will sync back to your database. And we have a, I believe we have a knowledge base article on the subject, and it's also found in the user guide. But that's the real main limitation that most people run into. Um, another question is, what is the cost if I need help deploying the application? Um, that would probably fall under fast track training. Um, you can purchase two-hour, four-hour, and eight-hour blocks of time. Um, to give you an example, a two-hour uh, fast-track training session is $400. Okay, that seems to be all the questions for today. So we're a little early. And again, if you have any questions, just you know, email us, call us. We'll be happy to help. So thanks a lot, and have a great day. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy our content, be sure to like and subscribe and visit our channel below for more. You can also find us online at tracerplus.com or on Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn. If you have any questions, feel free to call or email us at any time and we'll be happy to help.